a new add-in has been developed that allows FeatureCam to support turning heads, special tool holders that can turn when used on a milling machine, such as those from D'Andrea in Italy. In order for this to work, the curves should be drawn in the XZ plane, with each turning head feature having as its centre of rotation the Z-axis of a setup. This add-in currently only supports 4-axis indexing, with a multi-turret license being required in order to use it. The machine design files themselves must be modified with WinRack code in order to facilitate the simulated movement, and the post processor must also be modified to provide U coordinates where necessary. In this example, you can see we've got a part loaded in, and in this case, I'm just going to switch to my basic tools crib. But note the machine I'm using in this case is a Haas VF4 3 axis milling machine. You can see the shape of the component that we're trying to machine, which is this chess piece pawn that we want to go ahead and create. If I look at the front of the part, you can see this is the profile we're trying to turn. You'll also note that we've got two features already created. We've got a slot, and we've also got a turn head. So in order to create these turning head features, what we need to do is turn the add-in on. If you go to the Options, Add-ins. In this case, you can see I've already got it switched on. However, if you go to the library, and then simply search, in this case I'll search for turning, you'll see you get the turning head UDF feature. I've got it already loaded, so I'm ready to create the features. Let's turn this one off for the time being, and create a new one. So we go to New Feature, User Defined Feature, I'm using my turning head add-in, I'm going to go ahead and select a curve. Now I've got two curves here. I'm going to select the extended one first of all. Let's go and grab this and choose next. I get to a load of parameters that I can use to set my feature. I'm just going to go ahead and say finish and you see the feature is generated on the screen like so. Note I've deliberately extended this curve so that we can view this in our simulation and show particular issues that we might get. I'm going to go into this feature. Note we have a whole load of parameters available to us. Here you can see we've got a rough pass is being turned on. Currently we don't have a finishing pass for this. So I'm going to go ahead and select the finish pass and then set this to be true. We also have options such as the ability to control the total stock and also whether we're cutting the ID or inside diameter or the OD or outside diameter in this case. If I go to the roughing or finishing section Note this is updated because I've turned the finishing on. We can go to the turning tab and see we have a number of parameters to help us control this particular toolpath. For example, I've got start and end points. So I can go ahead and select, in this case, this point location at the top of the screen. I'm going to do the same for the finishing as well identifying that point location for both the end point and start point for the finish as well. Once I'm happy with my feature I can run through my centerline simulation. Note I get my slot being cut at the top. Then my turning tool comes into position and starts to work its way down through the material Note you can see here it's utilising whatever the size of that curve is to machine the shape of the feature. The reason I've chosen this extended curve is just to highlight that if I did a machine simulation, in this case revealing my clamp, I was to play that feature like so. As we get down into position, you'll note I get a collision. So we have full collision and gauge checking for this particular feature type. Also note that we don't display the full rotation of the tool, but we can see where the rotation would have gouged various parts of my fixture setup. If I was to allow that to continue to play, of course I would continue to get a gouge.
I can modify this feature again going into the properties into the turning settings in this case changing the maximum radius boundary to be this edge saying apply and then replay my simulation in this case I've cut too far down as well so I could also limit the depth using the other settings so back into the roughing into the turning tab in this case I'm going to set a left boundary at the base of the component so noting in this case the shape of the profile we've used the same tool for both the roughing and finishing I want to use a, uh, a finer tool to actually get into those groove areas so we can go back into that feature and under the finishing I'm going to use a slightly different tool so I'm going to switch to a 35 degree diamond tool I'm grabbing this metric tool at the bottom here and saying OK now we get the milling we get the rough turning and then we get the change of tool and then just single step in the simulation we can see we get the turned profile on the outside of the component like so taking this to the next level we can see here we've got a large casting component in this case we wish to do a series of turning operations around these outside flanges and then mix that with a series of milling operations to drill the holes. In this case I've got a machine loaded that has a, uh, an index around the y-axis and this is a horizontal machine that's going to be machining each of these regions in turn. Clicking a single step on the simulation to load the machine file and note here you can see the head of the machine with the sliding turning head moved out to its absolute extremity here to machine this flange. In this case I've got a tool dominant type operation so we'll see we'll do turning operations on each of the three flanges followed by the milling operations. In this case you can see we've got a combination of both OD turning and face turning followed by the drilling operations. There's our finished component. And if I stop the simulation and just view the NC code, note we can see the U parameters coming in to move that turning tool to each of its extreme level positions throughout the NC code.